Welcome. This is a brief view, of, or basically an introduction to SPSS, statistical software, statistical software for the social sciences. So what I'm going to do is just give you a basic understanding of it. We'll start with the data set. We're not going to run any analysis today. I'm just going to show you the data set and how we deal, how we enter data, etc. So here's an existing data set that I use with a lot of my classes. You'll see that when you open up SPSS, you generally get this nice little spreadsheet. So I have an empty spreadsheet here. I mean, if you have no data already, you do get the option to, to open it up if you have data and enter that data set right away. Of course, sometimes people will send you data sets, and if you don't have SPSS uploaded, you can't run the, you can't do anything. You have to actually have it. This I, I know it sounds kind of ridiculous, but you actually have to have SPSS loaded on your computer in order to open any SPSS data set. I'm just saying that because sometimes people don't know. They say, oh, you know, I try to open your data set, but nothing worked. Well, it's because you don't have it. But this is a spreadsheet. Just like any spreadsheet, it looks a lot like Excel, so there's a lot of similarities with Excel. In fact, you can import data from Excel directly into, into SPSS. There's two views. There's a variable view where the variables are listed going across each row, like this would be variable one, variable two, variable three. And then there is a data view where you can view all the data, where the variables are listed in the columns up top. And then each row represents an entry, like a person or whatever your data are. So let's go to an existing data set that I started with. So here we have a listing of variables. So there's, for instance, a variable called lunch, which is so, which is has a, a label, so we can actually look at this label. I'm going to expand this a little bit. It's free or reduced lunch, so free or reduced cost lunch. It has values associated with it. Zero does not receive free or low cost lunch. One receives free or low cost lunch. This is what we call a binary categorical variable. You might want to call it nominal variable. There's no missing value set here, so it's going to use the default. In, in SPSS, the default is a dot. And it just gives you a little, a little um, information about how, how many decimal places you're allowing, zero, the width in terms of how many values you can have. I mean, here it's zero and one, so it's only be one, take up one space. And at least this other set, the alignment and columns I'm not as interested in, but what I am interested in for your purposes is a, uh, variable type. So I said this is a nominal variable. You have three types. You have nominal, ordinal, or scale. Scale is the the term in SPSS for a continuous or quantitative variable. And you can actually assign a role. Like, is it an input variable? Is it a target variable? Whatever. You know, I'm, I just leave that. I, I don't need that because I know it. I'd, I'd rather know myself what the variables are in my analyses. I don't need anybody to tell me what they are. However, if you're working with other people, you might want to set these in some way, but you know, again, that's you, up to you. You'll see here, some variables don't have value set. That's because for age, for instance, you know, this is age is a continuous variable, right? So there are no discrete values. I mean, you could say, well, somebody's 14 years old. Yeah, you know, so you could make it into a discrete variable if you want, but age is not a discrete variable because there's an infinite number of points in between any two ages. So we can't really put values here. So the values our value labels are only there for when we have uh, discrete values. Now, SPSS doesn't do this for you automatically. You have to do it on your own. So I'll do that in a second. So that this is just an example of the variable view. If we go to data view, then we have the variables listed up top. The, you'll see that the nominal variables have these three little circles with them, quantitative or continuous, or if you want to call them interval ratio variables, they have this little ruler by them ordinal variables where there's a natural ordering they have these these bar charts it looks like kind of a histogram because they're touching one another but you know it's more of a bar chart you'll see that some of these variables it shows you the the actual label that's not going to matter when we're doing analyses obviously we can't do analyses with late with a with uh, with symbols or with letters we do it with, with numbers so that's your typical data set I can go back and forth like if I wanted to look at the, get information on lunch, I could double click lunch at the top there and it'll bring me back to here. I can, let me see what happens. I can't remember. If I click this, yeah, it'll bring me back to where I am. Okay. 
I can, of course, look at an individual. Like this individual has no data on lunch, so she's missing or he's missing data on lunch. It's a he. Age is 18, male, smokes daily, but less than uh, or equal to 10 cigarettes a day, has two peers smoking, and you know, so there's a lot of information about individuals here, okay? So let's um, go to the next step. I wanted to show you how to enter data. Now, you'll get a lot of these data sets based on, so for instance, if you're in a course, your professor might have a data set for you, or if you work for some organization, you may already have a data set, you may have people who enter data, so you might not have to do this, but in the real world, you have to be able to do both. So here's a little quick data set I just created with 10 participants, one with three different variables, well, two different variables. Participant ID generally doesn't isn't considered a variable. It's just a person's ID in the study, so we can identify who they are if we need to. Uh, the body mass index, which is the height and a measure of uh, height and weight. We use this body mass index to look at a person's health and their depressive symptoms measured with the Center for Epidemiological Studies depression inventory. So it's actually depressive symptoms, but I just call it depression here. So we have these different scores. So let's um, create the variables. All right, so we have BMI and depression. So I can go in here and you can go either way. I go variable view and write the first variables. BMI, it's numeric, I don't care. About, I really don't care about the, these two body mass index. Now, I, as far as I know, the BMI, I can't remember how the, well, see, the BMI is just a, our integer, so we don't have any, you know, any, any decimal places. So I could just leave that at, at zero. Or you can leave it at two in case there are some, but it'll just show up differently. Values, because it's, it's a continuous variable in this case, we won't have value labels. Missing is set by default. And we're going to call this a scale variable, right? Let's do another one. That's The other one is um, depression. Now, when you write variable names, if you want to use two, like BMI something you have uh, uh, BMI 2021 you'd actually you can't have spaces and variable names so you'd have to use an underscore that's one of the weird things about SPSS and a lot of these packages they don't allow you to have spaces because they'll treat them like two different variables so I could say BMI 2021 like that and then this one we call CES so this is the Center for Epidemiological Studies Depression, CESD score. You can have spaces here because this is a label. And it's also a scale variable. Now imagine if we had a variable called sex for biological sex. And this one would be also numeric. We want to do analyses. So we want to do analyses with numeric variables, say biological sex. Sex. But here we would have values, so we, we can assign whatever value we want. We could say the value zero represents males. Notice that when I start putting the label in, it says add, so that I have to add it in here. And here, because I have two decimal spaces, see, I get 0, 0.00, which doesn't make sense here. And let's, but we'll fix that. One equals female. And hit add, and now we're done. Okay. But I don't like that we have two decimal spaces here, so I'm just going to hit zero. And I might actually do that for depression as well, because we don't have any anything but integers there. This is a nominal variable, right? All right, so now we go to our data view. We'll see we're all set up so we can start entering our values. Now, there's different ways you can enter values. You can either enter them, you know, set, have your sheet of paper separate and just start entering them. Or if you're clever, and it should work, you can just like copy and paste. I think these are right next to each other. Copy these bad boys here and go to your, your um, did I have BMI? I think this is what I had, BMI and depression. Let's hit paste. And there you go, see? And then for sex, so I, so I just made that up, so I'm just gonna make it up, so zero. 
mail. Ooh, that's not, did you see that? Did you see what that happened? Did you see that? So zero, right? So it'll let you do whatever you want here. So good. One. Oh. So it's asking me for all these little thingies here. Email. Right. So you can just keep on entering them like that. Okay. And so on. Or you, or you could have started it the opposite way. You could have just enter the data first, and then, and then, fix the variables later. So that's that's our our. Introduction into SPSS. After this, later on, we'll talk about how to analyze data and provide descriptive statistics. That'll be next, but that's for another video. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any comments, let me know, like, and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.